Hi, I'm Anna, and on this episode of the AI Show, we're going to talk about adding Bing search to bots. So be sure to tune in. Hi, I'm Anna Thomas, and welcome to this episode of the AI Show. Today, I'm going to be talking to you all about adding Bing search to bots. So you may have seen or heard me talk about the Learn AI Bootcamp before, and we've given it a massive facelift and we've renamed it to the Azure Cognitive Services Bootcamp. Now, the idea of this is to really get hands-on with the V4 SDK, which went GA about a month ago at Ignite. And we also want to help you learn how to integrate these various services into your application. So if you haven't seen my first episode, I do have an episode that kind of walks through the basics of this. And uh, this one, we're going to talk about the deltas and really dive into some of the code around bots. So the Azure Cognitive Services Bootcamp is uh, a two-day bootcamp that's meant to really get you ramped up at a three to 400 level um, capability on the various cognitive services that we have as well as bots. So you can see here, uh, and this may look familiar if you uh, participated in the Learn AI Bootcamp, but you can see here all the different labs that we have. Now, since our original creation of these labs, uh, some things have changed, right? So uh, Custom Vision Service added object detection. So we've created a lab that kind of gets you hands-on in C Sharp with creating an object detection model using custom vision. And you know the bot framework has been through a lot, going from V3 to V4 free preview to V4 GA. And so you know we've kept up with that and rebuilt this lab several times to make sure that we're getting you the latest and greatest information and guidance about creating uh, intelligent applications. And more recently, we've been hearing a lot of hype about the Bing Search APIs and adding search to your application. So we decided to add a lab that adds Bing Search as well. So just to talk a little bit through the high-level scenario before I get into the code, um, behind me you see the architecture that might be familiar. Uh, so the scenario is kind of this, right? You have a bunch of images that are stored locally, and you want to be able to search for them easily, and you also want them stored somewhere other than locally because like stuff happens. Uh, so what we do first is you create a console application that calls the computer vision API and then returns the caption and the tags for each of your images. We also put the images up in a storage blob with this command line application and return the blob URI. So then we package up the blob URI with the caption and the tags and we send it into Cosmos DB where we create an Azure search index on top of it. And then, you know, this makes it so that we can search for our pictures based on the caption and the tags and still get a, a, the blob URI to those images from the bot. Uh, we also enhance our bot using Lewis, which is Microsoft's language understanding intelligence service. And this makes it for easier querying and so the bot understands better what the users are saying. And then finally, if, you know, if a user can't find an image they're looking for, uh, we've decided to add Bing image search so that they can have the option to also search the web. So with that, I want to kind of dig into the materials and kind of show you some of the, the code that we've developed. Um, this URL, if you hit it, it will take you to all of the courses that the Learn AI team puts out. So it'll take you to this URL, and here you'll find all the materials for our various courses that we have available. And if you select this bootcamp link, you'll be directed to the Learn AI bootcamp or the Azure Cognitive Services bootcamp. And you'll see the goals, you'll see the prerequisites, you'll see this agenda, which I went over a little bit. And you can dig into each of the labs from here. And you can do them in any order you want. Um, some of them depend on the others, but for the most part, you can complete them uh, in whatever order. So we'll go ahead and dive in just to see what they look like. Uh, each lab will have kind of an overview and some objectives an introduction, uh, explanation of how we got to where we were in the architecture, as well as some finished solutions for you to refer to, and some guidance on which labs are in it. Uh, so with that, I just want to go ahead and dig into the code itself. So we'll start from the solution of the building bots lab, and then we'll walk through how you add Bing search to it. So there's a lot of stuff here, and from the various templates that they make available for you, there's really a, a lot available for you. And I think that this class is a good one to work through because it shows, you know, kind of the conversation management style of, of this bot framework. And, and again, you can manage your code however you want, um, and, and the bot team has done a really great job of making that true. But 
But for now, uh, we're going to enter the bot through the onturn async method. And basically, if the mess the activity we receive is a message, then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create the context. And this is basically how we keep track of state during the conversation during a conversation. And um, that enables us to know where users are in a different conversation and remember different things at various points within the conversation that we might need later. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get the context first. And then from the results of that, we're going to see, you know, were they in the middle of a dialogue? And if they were, then let's put them back in that dialogue to continue. Now, if they weren't in the middle of a dialogue, then let's go ahead and start the main dialogue. And so just to kind of go over that, we have our main dialog here. And then I also define the waterfall step. So we can see I have a greeting and a main menu step in my main waterfall. And I have a search request and a search step in my uh, search dialog. I also have a text prompt here around you know, what the users want to search for. And uh, in these labs, you'll get to work with the prompts library, which has been, I think, a big part of the, the new SDK and can be really helpful um, when you're asking questions that need a certain response. So let's kind of step through the different, uh, the different steps in the conversation. So the first one is greeting async. And at each step, we're going to go ahead and grab that state so we know where the user is in the conversation. And the way we've set this up is that the state greeted is set to not greeted by default. And if you, you know, once we greet the user, and uh, then we'll update that state to greet it. And you'll see uh, throughout we have these reply with greetings. Uh, we, dis we decided to separate all of our responses. And this helps make our code look cleaner, as well as it makes it easier to update the response. So, you know, if we wanted to greet them again, you know, we don't have to go and replace it in every, every place. Then we'll go ahead and reply with help. And this just says, you know, like, I can search for pictures, I can share pictures, and I can order pictures. We'll wait for the user to respond. And then uh, once they respond, they'll come to here. But they'll be set to greeted. So we'll go ahead to the next step. In the next step, again, we'll grab that state. And we're going to use regular expressions to see if we understand what the user is trying to search for. And based on that, we'll use a switch statement to respond accordingly. And you see we have some canned responses for if they want to share pictures, if they want to order pictures, or if they want to want help. Um, but really, the only one that leads into another dialog is the search dialog, or the search uh, switch statement. And um, so it's a relatively simple bot, but we think it illustrates the various aspects of switching between dialogs. Now, if we don't receive a like a response from regular expressions, what we'll do is we'll call Lewis. So we'll wait for the result from the Lewis recognizer, and we'll get the top intent. And based on the top intent, similarly to regular expressions, we'll respond accordingly. The only difference is I've also added the Lewis score, so we know, you know the different confidence level. And this can help us either increase the confidence of our various Lewis models and improve it, or just know when we're calling Lewis or versus when we're calling regular expressions, just for testing purposes. So if we get into the search picks case, the next thing we want to do is see if what the user was searching for was identified. So for example, if we search for, you know, the user says, show me dog pics. And um, we don't want to then ask them, what do you want to search for? Because they told us. But if they don't tell us, then we want to ask them. So we'll try to find that entity. And if we do find the entity, then we'll set the searching state to yes. And this basically makes it so that we don't ask them that question. And we'll save our state again. And either way, we'll step into this search dialog. And recall, the search dialog has two steps. So the first is search request async. We get the state. Um, if the searching state is set to no, that means we don't know what they want to search for. So we'll update it and prompt them. So this is using the prompt library. We'll prompt them with a text message saying, what would you like to search for? When they respond to this, they'll be you know, placed out of this step, and they'll go to the next step. In this step, search async. We'll grab the state again. And if we don't know what it is they want to search for, we'll take whatever they just told us and set that to the search text. Right. So here we're setting it as search text, and we'll say, OK, searching for whatever it is you said you wanted to search for. And then we'll start our search. Um, and so we just have like two or three tasks that actually do this for us. We create a search index client with Azure Search first. And then we submit our search text to the service. 
And then in this last result, we, if there is a result, uh, we create some models, and you can go through those over here. Um, but we create some models that basically send this back in as a carousel of hero cards. And then we'll send that back to the user. So let's go ahead and just see what that looks like and give you a break from looking at code. And so we, when your bot is running, you'll get a message like this. And then we can open the emulator and restart our conversation. If you haven't worked with the new emulator, it's really cool also. So um, we walk through how to get set up on that. So I might say something to the bot. It'll tell me, you know, this is the help message. And I could say, search pics. And it'll ask me, say docs. And we can see this is that carousel of cards I was talking about. Um, we could also just search. So show me swimming cats photos. And so we can see Lewis was called because that's our intent score. You can also see, OK, searching for swimming cats. And now this response wasn't exactly what we were looking for, but uh, this was all that was in our photos that we uploaded. So that's kind of where the motivation for adding this next step comes in, uh, for adding an option to search Bing, basically. So if we step over to the finished solution, I just wanted to show you guys the additions that make that happen. So this is all the same. The first change comes here. So recall in the previous one, we just had two steps here. But now we're adding search being async. And we're also adding a different type of prompt, a choice prompt, because we're going to ask them a yes, no question. And I've called that being prompt. So if we go down to our search being async task, we'll see. Bear with me as I scroll. OK, so we've got our search being async. We're going to grab our state. We're going to grab what the user said they wanted to search for. And if we have, once we have the answers to whether or not they want to search, it would be helpful if I showed you where those answers came from. Um, so after we search Azure Search, we're going to set the state from yes to Bing, and we'll send them that choice prompt. OK, so once this happens, then we'll go into this. And we'll do a switch based on their answer to the would you like to search Bing uh, choice prompt. And if they say yes, then we'll say, OK, searching for whatever it is you said you wanted to search for. And then we'll, we'll search Bing with their text. So this task here is quite simple. Um, don't steal my subscription key. I'll refresh it. Um, but basically, we create an instance with the client, uh, similar to how we did with Azure Search. And we get the results uh, from the service. And then if we do have results, uh, and just to show you guys a different way of adding attachments to messages from hero cards, like we did with the original one, um, we've added simple attachments. Um, so those are really easy to put in. We just say what kind of images, they, what kind of uh, content they are. And then you can see we're grabbing just the top five results from that Bing, uh, Bing search. And then we'll reply, here are your top five results. And we'll send that activity, which we defined here. So you can see it was like really quite simple to set up Bing image search. <coughs> and let's see what it looks like. So we can open our bot emulator again, refresh, kind of go through a similar flow. What up, bot? Uh, show me cat swimming. What did I say before? Swimming cats. Swimming cats photos. And we get, again, Lewis. OK, searching for swimming cats. Here are the results I found. This is not a swimming cat. Would you like to review the web results from Bing? And see, we've got these buttons. And that's what the, choice li the prompt library does with the choice prompts. We hit yes. Tells us, so we see it tells us, um, OK, searching for more images for swimming cats. Here are the top five results from Bing for swimming cats. And you can see we get some very nice swimming cats photos. I'm not sure if cats are really big swimmers. They're actually the same photo. Um, but, but yeah, you can, you can kind of hopefully see the gist of this. And hopefully, uh, you know, by walking through these labs, you'll then be able to add not only Bing, uh, Bing image search, but also the other Bing instances to your applications. And with that, I want to thank you. And check out all of our resources. And join us next time on the AI Show. Thank <laughs> you.